In this section, we will talk about polynomial and rational inequalities. First of all, let's recap what the solution of an equation or an inequality is. The solution of an equation or inequality is a value or values of a variable that make the equation or inequality a true statement. And the set of all solutions of an equation is called the solution set. For example, let's take the equation x squared, e x squared minus 4 equals to 0, and we want to determine is x equals 2 a solution. So to determine if it's a solution, we take x equals 2, we plug it into the equation, and if x equals 2 makes the equation a true statement, then it is a solution. So let's plug this in, we get 2 squared uh, minus 4. We want to check, does that equal to 0? So this is 4 minus 4. Um, 4 so 0 equals to 0, that's a true statement. Therefore, yes, this is a solution. Okay, let's check, is 3 a solution? So again, to check if x equals 3 is a solution, we plug it in um, to determine if that creates a true statement. So we have 3 squared minus 4, that's going to be 9 minus 4. So 5 is not equal to 0, therefore, this is not a solution. Is x equals 4? So we have 4 squared minus 4 equals to 0. 4 squared is 16, and we can already tell that 12 is not equal to 0, so it's not a solution. What about 5? So we got 5 squared minus 4. We want to check, does that equal to 0? That's 25 minus 4, which is 21. 21 is not equal to 0, therefore this is also not a solution. Now let's let's take a look at an inequality. Okay. Now before actually we do that, what are the solutions of x squared minus 4 equals to 0? Well, if we add 4 to both sides, then we're going to get um, x squared equals to 4. And then we square root both sides, therefore, x equals to plus or minus 2. So 2 squared is 4, 4 minus 4 is 0. Negative 2 squared is 4, 4 minus 4 is also 0. So our solutions are going to be plus or minus 2. And if we, if we were to graph this, we can actually see it graphically. So the uh, parent graph of x squared is being shifted 4 units down. And your graph is going to look something like this and it's going to intersect the x-axis at x equals to 2 and x equals to negative 2. So at x equals 2 and at x equals negative 2, uh, the graph is equal to 0. The function has a value of 0. Therefore, these are our solutions. Now let's take a look at an inequality. So at 2 and negative 2, the function exactly equals to 0. But what if we want to test, does x squared minus 4, is that where, where is it greater than 0? So in this case, in this inequality, is x equals 2 a solution? So we plug in x equals 2 in, in that expression. So we're going to get 2 squared uh, minus 4. We want to check, is that greater than 0? So this, this is 4 minus 4. Now, 0 greater than 0, this is a false statement. Okay, The statement is false. So because it's a false statement, this is not a solution. Now look at look at what's happening. For an equation, this was a solution. X equals 2 was a solution because it made the equation a true statement. But for this inequality, it is not a solution because it does not make the inequality into a true statement. Let's take a look at a b. Is x equals 3 a solution? So if we plug in x equals 3 in that expression, we're going to get 3 squared minus 4. We want to check, is that greater than 0? This is 9 minus 4, uh, which is 5. Now, is 5 greater than 0? Um, it's not. Oh, sorry. 5 is greater than 0. I apologize. 5 is greater than 0. That is a true statement. Therefore, x equals 3 is a solution. What about 4? So if we take 4 squared minus 4, we want to check. Is that greater than 0? That's 16 minus 4, which is 12. 12 is greater than 0. That is a true statement. Therefore, x equals 4 is also a solution. Okay, what about 5? So we take 5 squared minus 4. We want, to, we want to determine, is that greater than 0? That's 25 minus 4. That's 21. Now, 21 is greater than 0. Therefore, x equals 5 is a solution. And actually, any number, uh, as, as we approach infinity, like 6, 7, 8, 9, any number you plug in will give you an expression uh, with a value greater than 0. So any number to the right of 2, from 2 to infinity, not including 2, will be a solution. 
And we can actually see that on the graph. So take a look graphically what's, what's going on. At x equals 2, the graph has a value of 0. But we want to determine where is the value greater than 0. So greater than 0 means the graph is going to be above the x-axis. And as x is 3, as x is 4, x is 5, x is 6, the graph will have a value of greater than 0. So in this entire interval, the graph will have a value of greater than 0. Same thing over here. To the left of negative 2, like negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, all these values will also have a um, value for the graph greater than 0. So all those are going to be our solutions. And today, uh, we are going to determine how to, how to find these solutions algebraically. So these are our steps which uh, we'll go through as we do the problem. So we want to take our same inequality, x squared minus 4, greater than 0, and we want to find the solution set for this inequality. So step one, write the inequality so that the polynomial um, is on the left side. For inequalities, the polynomial always has to be on the left side, and the other side has to be 0. So the right side has to be 0. So that's done. Step two, find the real numbers at which the expression equals to 0. Now, temporarily, we're going to ignore the inequality. And step two says, find the values of x where the equation equals to 0. So we're going to say, where is x squared minus 4 exactly equal to 0? And for any quadratic, we can solve it by factoring or the quadratic formula. Here, I'm just going to factor this as x plus 2 times x minus 2 equals to 0. And by the zero product property, we get x equals to negative 2 uh, or x equals to positive 2. So at negative 2 and 2, this function has a value of exactly 0. And that's going to be step 2. Step 3 says, use the numbers found in step 2 to separate the number line into intervals. So let's do that first. So we take negative 2, we take positive 2, and then I'm going to put a dash at negative 2 and a dash at positive 2, which is going to create these intervals. So let me highlight the intervals. One interval is from negative infinity to negative 2. That's interval number 1. The second interval is between negative 2 and 2. That's interval number 2. And the third interval is from 2 to infinity, and that is interval number three. So we have interval one, interval two, and interval three. The next part of, of step three says, uh, choose a test point in each interval. Now, what is a test point? A test point could be any point in that interval. It doesn't matter what, what point we pick. So we can pick any point between negative infinity and negative two. To keep things simple, let's just pick negative three. So we pick any point to the left of negative two. So for my text test point, I'm, I'm choosing um, x equals to negative 3. Between negative 2 and 2, anytime 0 is an option, always choose that. So I'm picking x equals to 0 as my test point. And then I'm going to pick any point to the right of 2. So I'm going to pick x equals to 3 as my test point. Now let's plug this in to the, uh, to the um, inequality here. Instead of plugging into the original inequality, I'm going to plug it into the factored form to make things a little bit easier. So I have um, negative 3 plus 2 times negative 3 minus 2. And we want to determine, is that greater than 0? So negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. You want to check, is that greater than 0? 5 is greater than 0. So in this interval, we get a true statement. OK, let's check interval number 2 x equals to 0. Is that a solution? So I'm going to say x plus 2. x is 0, so I'm going to have 0 plus 2. And then I have 0 minus 2. OK, so we got 0 plus 2 times 0 minus 2. We want to determine, is that greater than 0? And we go back to the original inequality. So we have 2 times negative 2. We want to check, is that greater than 0? Is negative 4 greater than 0? No, it's not. That is a false statement. Let's go to 3. Um, so take x equals 3, replace each x in the parentheses. So we have 3 plus 2 times 3 minus 2. We want to check, is that greater than 0? This is 5 times 1. That's 5. Now 5 is greater than 0, and that makes this a true statement. Our solution um, is going to contain of the intervals where we have a true statement. So the first interval is going to be negative infinity comma negative 2. And at negative 2, uh, I'm going to put a parenthesis. 
because we have a greater than sign. So remember that if you have a less than or a greater than, we get a parentheses. If you have a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, we get a bracket. If we have negative infinity or positive infinity, um, then we also get a parentheses. So negative 2 is going to have a parentheses because we would strictly want the, the, the expression x squared minus 4 to be greater than 0. At negative 2, it equals to 0. So we don't want that included, which means I'm going to have a parentheses. Union uh, 2 comma infinity. Because this interval also makes a true statement. And this is going to be our solution set. And we can actually see that on the graph that we drew um, in the previous slide, that the graph uh, has a positive value. In other words, this graph is above 0 when x is greater than 2 or when x is less than negative 2. On those two intervals, the graph is above 0, which we can actually see graphically. Okay, so just follow these four steps and, um, you know, we should, we should get to our answer. Let's take a look at another one. We want to solve this inequality, graph the solution set, write the solution set in interval notation. So step one, make sure all the variables are on the left. Everything's on the left. The right side should be zero, which we have. Step two, we want to determine the zeros. So in other words, where is this, uh, where is this exactly equal to zero? So if I solve this, I'm going to get x equal to negative six. If I solve that, I'm going to get x equal to positive 3. And if I solve this, I'm going to get x equal to negative 1. Okay. In step 3, we're going to plot these on a number line. Okay. In step 3, let's plot these on a number line. So we have our first point is negative 6. Now be careful, go in the order of the number line. So negative 1 should be here, uh, and then 3 should be here. So we're going to split this up into 1, 2, 3, and 4 intervals. So our first interval is going to be from negative infinity to negative 6. That's interval 1. Uh, our second interval is going to be from negative 6 to negative 1. That is going to be interval 2. Then our third interval is also going to be, uh, well, it's going to be between negative 1 and 3. That's interval 3. And then our fourth interval is going to be from um, 3 to infinity. Okay, so we got these we got these four intervals. Now we got to pick a test point in each of the intervals. So let's go ahead and pick a test point. So here I can pick any number less than negative 6. So I'm going to pick x equal to negative 7. Here I can pick any number between negative 6 and negative 1. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to pick negative 3 as my test point. Here, 0 is an option, so I'm going to pick x equal to 0. And here, I can pick any number. I'm just going to pick x equals to 4 because it's gr greater than positive 3. Now I'm going to plug these in. So this, one, this part I want to do quickly. I have um, negative 7 plus 6. Then I have negative 7 minus 3 because x equals negative 7. And then I have negative 7 plus 1. And I want to check, is that less than or equal to 0? So negative 7 plus 6 is negative 1. Negative 7 minus 3 is negative 10. Negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6. I want to see, is that, is that less than or equal to 0? So we have uh, negative 1 times 10 is 10, times negative 6 is negative 60. Negative 60 is less than or equal to 0, so this um, makes the interval uh, a true statement. Okay. So now let's go to the second interval, negative 6 to negative 1. I'm plugging in 3. So I'm going to go through this quickly. Negative 3 plus 6, that's going to be 3. Negative 3 minus 3, that's going to be negative 6. Negative 3 plus 1, that's going to be negative 2. I want to determine, is that less than or equal to 0? So that's going to be negative 18 times negative 2. That's positive 36. Now, is 36 less than 0? No, that is a false statement. Let's go to the next one. 0 plus 6 is 6. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. And 0 plus 1 is 1. We want to determine, is that less than or equal to 0? So that's negative 18 times 1 is negative 18. Is negative 18 less than or equal to 0? Yes, it is. So that is also a true statement. What about 4? So 4 plus 6 is 10. Um, 4 minus 3 is 1. And 4 plus 1 is 5. Is that less than or equal to 0? That's 50. 50 is not less than 0. Um, so this is a false statement. Our solution set is going to contain the intervals uh, with the true statements. So we have negative infinity, comma, negative 6, union, negative 1, comma, positive 3. And these have brackets because we have a less than or equal to, so these are 
include 